Welcome to Omaha, Nebraska. We are on the campus of Creighton University inside the DJ Sokol Arena where this afternoon the Creighton Blue Jays host the Georgetown Hoyas. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Brad Burwell alongside color analyst Rob Sims. Please be able to bring you the action here today. We looked at the records of these individual teams, 9-5 and five for Creighton, 8-5 and five for Georgetown. But Creighton comes in, or actually Georgetown comes in looking for their first conference victory. Yeah, 0-3 in the conference after coming in, winning their last seven games in the non-conference schedule. And we think about uh, some of the toughness they found uh, thus far. It's going to get a lot tougher here as Deanna White, their leading scorer, not scheduled to play today because of the flu. Yeah, Deanna White may not play in this game, so that will put the emphasis on Donna Burton, their point guard, who averages just six points per game, but four and almost four and a half assists per game. She's stepped up her scoring lately. She's going to need to do it even more this afternoon. Yeah, coming off a career and a high, 19 points. On the Creighton side of the ball, they've gotten off to a good start, three and one in conference play. And you can look at a lot of players, but the person really leading the offense and directing it is Sydney Lamberty. Sydney Lamberty, her scoring has gone down over the last three years since coming in as an all Big East freshman. But it's, like you said, the ball in her hand leads the Big East in assist turnover ratio and fourth in the lead with 4.4 assists per game. So we'll look for her to control the offense, but let's look at those keys to the game. So the Hoyas are going to have to help the big three, and that's now down to the big two without Deanna White out there. So they're going to need to help Faith Woodard and Dorothy Adamako out, get some production out of their bench. You see that's a point, point of emphasis for both teams. And the Blue Jays, if they can score in the paint, that opens up their outside shot, and it's something Georgetown has a hard time defending. So we're going to take this pause right now. We'll be back in 30 seconds with game action. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. And you'll see the uh, schedule full slate of action today on BEDN throughout the Big East. And then we'll look at Tuesday upcoming action after this one. Uh, four games uh, coming up on Tuesday. So a lot of action on the Big East Digital Network. Yeah, interesting to see all 10 in action at the same time here this afternoon. We'll take a look at the uh, standings uh, for the, well, actually we'll look at the matchups here. Uh, Creighton, we mentioned the nine and five record. Pretty similar, uh, Creighton uh, comes in uh, with a little bit of an edge in the three-point line. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how well Georgetown can defend Creighton's three-point shooting. They're second in the Big East in three-point percentage and third in three points made per game. And uh, Georgetown swept this series last year. Creighton leads the all-time series four games to two. We'll take a look at the starting lineups that are being introduced to the crowd here right now. First for the Hoyas as you look at their bench in preparation for this one. And the big one, Mikea Jones getting the start in place of White. Yeah. White who averages 15 points on the season. She upped that to 16 points per game in conference play and she leads the league and steals on the bench with an illness and Mikea Jones getting her first start as a Hoya. We'll take a look at the Creighton uh, starting laps. They're getting introduced to the crowd here right now. And you see Audrey Faber coming out, the super sophomore leading this team in scoring. Yeah, 16 points per game over her last six, including a much improved three point percentage. She's shooting 48% from long range in that span. After her first eight games, she was only shooting 23%, so she's fi finally found her three-point shot, which is good news for Blue Jay fans. Both of these benches very short and just got a lot shorter for Georgetown today with White's uh, illness. Creighton suffered some injuries early on. MC McCrory, one of their key starters, out for the season with concussion. Uh, and so uh, they're probably only going to go about seven, eight deep. Well, we talked about White as well, out for Georgetown. They've they've been without Belk, Yasmin Belk, for much of this season. She's been cleared to play. She was cleared last game, didn't play last game, but it'll be interesting to see if the six foot three center might get some action today here at 
Creighton. Well, it will be Woodard jumping it up for the Hoyas. And as probably as always, Brianna Rollison, their post player, the senior, will be jumping center for the Blue Jays. And we're about ready to get this one underway. Today's officials, Tim Daly, Ryan Durham, and Nikesha Thompson. And it will be Tim Daly tossing the ball up to get things started. We hope you enjoy the action here this afternoon on the Big East Digital Network. The Hoyas control it, and it's Burton with the ball initially. Work the ball around the perimeter, and they do not get a lot of production out of their post. They're mostly from their guards as Burton puts it up, in and out, no good. Rebounded, finally brought out of there by Lauren Works. And Donna Burton's going to have to take some shots. The defense might sag off of her a little bit, but she's proven, as you mentioned, 19 points against Marquette about 10 days ago. We see Lambert, who we talked about in the pregame, handles the ball very well, not your traditional point guard. Trying to get the ball down low, finds Rollerson back out. They'll swing it to Faber. And they're down on the shot clock, and Creighton just took too many passes there and stolen there by Jones all the way to the bucket and up and in. So uh, points off turnover, which could be a key to this game, but Creighton probably just looking for too good. They had a couple of players that had a good look. Yeah, fumbled it out of bounds, and Janning almost would have been better off had she let it go out of bounds rather than leading straight into a transition bucket. Lamberty trying to work around the screen, puts up the 15, actually puts it down low. Rollerson, good, and she is fouled. We'll give Lamberty another assist. Yeah, Lamberty's so so good. She she tricked us into thinking she was going up for the shot here. Look at that. She pulled the defense in as well, but the heads up her teammate, the post player, Rollerson, ready to receive and finish. Opportunity for a three-point play. Rollerson, a 66% free throw shooter on the year, nails that, gives Creighton their first lead of the game. Hoy is coming the other way with Burton in control. You'll see the ball in her hands most of the time. Ramil, the post player, a little jump hook from the baseline gets it to go down. Well, that's a good news for the Hoyas. Ramil had only scored two points total over her last six games played, so she looked comfortable going up with that shot right there. Just a freshman. They're expecting a lot out of her in her career. She has a sister who is a sophomore. Faber, three, nails it. We talked about her three-point shooting as of late. Yeah, again, 23% from long range over her first eight games. That's something Creighton fans are not used to seeing. What she did there is what they are used to seeing. She's now shooting 50% with that make over the last six games. Burton starts a drive. Right elbow jumper, up and good. So the lefty. Knocks down her first field goal and ties this ball game back up at six. Yeah, and if she can get going offensively, it could be a long day for the Blue Jays. Lamberty trying to work around the screen. Lamberty will take the three and nails it. So two threes in a row for Creighton. And that's something that, that Lamberty has improved lately as well. A nice play to the bucket there by Burton, taking it off the glass. Comes right back, so both teams shooting very well early on. Georgetown gave Creighton fits last year with their length on the perimeter. Lauren Works, who's gotten the start here with McGrory's injury. Janning tries a three. That one off the mark, but Rollers an offensive board. Janning trying to take it inside the perimeter. They swing back. Faber will take the three and nails another one. Three in a row by Creighton from beyond the arc. Well, you want to talk about flipping the script there, too. If Dada Burton could get going for Georgetown, Creighton's in trouble. If Faber can continue to shoot like that, Georgetown's in trouble. Burton with the ball again. Jones, she'll take the three off the front of the iron, Channing with a rebound. Neither Woodard or Adamako has taken a shot as of yet for Georgetown. And those are their two other leading scores. Janning three off the front of the iron, no good. Jones with a rebound. Well, it's not only that Woodard and Adamako haven't taken a shot, they've hardly had the ball in their hand on any of Georgetown's offensive sets. Jones, they finally do get the ball in the hands of Adamako, puts it up, and she is fouled. And that's going to send her to the free throw line as she was in the act of shooting. And that foul is going to be on Lamberty. Check it right here. Is kind of got her with the shoulder and on the arm as she was going up. Adamako, we mentioned it. She hadn't even touched the ball 
prior to this possession on offense for the Hoyas, averaging 14 and a half points, better than seven rebounds per game for the junior from Virginia. She is a 78% free throw shooter, but misses the first one there. Substitution, Bailey Norby in. Also Jalen Agnew, the freshman for Creighton. And she does hit the second one as Lamberty and Rollerson will take a bit of a breather. Also in the game, Jody Marie Ramil, the older sister we talked about of Olivia Ramil. Bailey Norby tries to get it down low to favor. That one goes astray, and Burton coming the other way. Burton all the way to the basket, blocked by Norby, and Agnew comes out of there with the ball. Creighton not known as a proficient blocking team, but they set a school record here about a month ago, and the favor knocks down another one. Favor, three shots, all from long range, all gone through the cylinder. 15 points just midway through this first quarter for Creighton. Anamako along three, she nails it. So both teams just shooting lights out to start this ball game. Yeah, both teams better than 60% from the field right now. Anamako, what a great ball player. Preseason Big East honoree, former Big East freshman of the year. They need to get her going. Almost walked with the ball to Norby. Gets, does get it in the hands of Janning. Janning drives around. Eight footer baseline block very nicely there by Woodard and she comes away with the ball. Woodard takes it all the way to the basket, up and in off the glass. Very athletic move by Woodard. Uh, Woodard's a much improved player this year. Her scoring, her rebounding's gone up. She went over 1,000 points recently and that block shot right there is her 93rd in her career. She's fifth all time in program history. So her improvement has really helped Georgetown off to that good start this year. Jenny, dish back out, stolen again by Woodard. Three on one break coming the other way, all the way to the basket, puts it up, no good, but brought out of there by Jones. So Creighton, a couple of turnovers, cost him one basket, almost cost him another. 425, less first quarter has been in to in action. They go down to Ramil Woodard from three, no good, rebounded by Faber. Been very little pause in the action. I'll be at a couple of free throws, but it's been end to end here as Creighton just with a 15-14 lead. Faber, oh, she finally misses. After hitting three, she missed that one a little bit short. Adamako starts to drive against Agnew, gives it up to Ramil down low. Burton's going to drive baseline back to Ramil, walk with the basketball. And that's going to get us to a timeout on the floor. 3.53 left in this first quarter. Creighton with a 15 to 14 lead. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network.
Farwell, Rob Sims back at the DJ Silver Arena. 3.53 left first quarter. Creighton on top 15 to 14. We'll take a look at the current Big E standings before today's action. All games underway right now. DePaul still the only undefeated team in the conference. Georgetown, as we mentioned, the only winless team. Well, and look at who Georgetown's played so far. They've lost to DePaul. They've lost to Marquette. And now they have Creighton. So a tough go of it to start the conference season for the Hoyas. And we'll take a look at uh, the three-point shooting of each team right now. The Right now, Creighton shooting four out of seven, one out of three for Georgetown. And uh, it was really Audrey Faber who lit it up. Yeah, Faber hit her first three attempts in this one. And you just saw Lamberty knock one down as well for the Blue Jays. And that's really been a, a lot of their offense, says Faber. That's the third. She finally missed one, but to show she's human, but uh, Creighton, uh, Creighton's had a couple of turnovers that have hurt them, and so they're going to have to be very cautious with that because that's led to a couple of easy bu buckets. Lamberty with Maya Melman in the game. Faber will launch another three, so she's gone a little colder. She missed her last two. Ball on the floor, and finally pulled out of there by the Hoyas. Coming away is Jones. And back to Burton, and she'll direct the offense here. Into the ball game right now, Cynthia Petke, number five, is put up and a two-pointer there by Adamako. After Adamako didn't touch the ball on the first couple of possessions for Georgetown, she's come down and scored six points straight for the Hoyas. Faber had hit her first three, missed her last two. Agnew talked about her play as of recent, the redshirt freshman. They go down low post, put up, and we've got a foul underneath again. They find Rollerson underneath. We're gonna take a look at uh, Natasha Adair, uh, the third year coach for Georgetown. She came in here first year, four and 27, but a great turnaround for her. 16 and 14 last year, so that was the third best turnaround in the country to, to go from 4 and 27 to a winning record and advance to the WNIT last year. And uh, she's got this team trending in the right direction. Eight and five, as we indicated so far this year. Rollerson hits her first. Second one up and hands that one also. Into the ball game, Lauren Works giving Faber her first breather of the ball game. Creighton, as we indicated, this is about as deep as they'll go. They may get Kylie Brown into the game, a reserve post player. She played some minutes at DePaul in that defeat. Near side. Now, Adamako, who's been hot, she'll take the three this time. That one's short, and that one goes out of bounds, so it will be a Creighton ball. Yeah, Adamako closing in on 1,000 career points. She's up to 980 with her six points today. Take a look at head coach Jim Flannery of the Blue Jays, the all-time winningest coach in program history at his alma mater. His 15th year, we talked about the flu. He's got a little bit of the touch of the flu. Agnew misses that one from beyond the arc. Pulled down out of there by Petke. Nearing the two-minute mark of this first quarter. Burton all the way to the bucket, puts it up and in. So we said she's going to have to come up big, and so far she has. Well, she's done a good job of really putting the pressure on Creighton's defense. She's not, she's not slow with the ball. She was able to just change her speed there a little bit, hesitated, put it on the floor, got around her defender. Six points already for Dada Burton. Lauren Works gives it up to Agnew. They'll swing it around the perimeter. Maya Melman puts it up. That one off the iron, no good. Rollerson with a rebound and amongst a couple of Georgetown Hoyas and she gets fouled again. So here's the trend so far in this game. Every time that Rollerson has touched the ball, almost every time she's touched the ball in the paint, She's gotten fouled. Outside of that, Creighton's first 12 field goal attempts, of those 12, 10 have been from the perimeter. So they are not trying to get it, or they're not able to get it inside, and they're settling sometimes for three-point shots. Number 32, Yasmin Belk, her first action since the third game of the season as that one put down no good. Rollerson tries to put it up over her head, and they thought there was a foul, no foul called as Belk kind of interfere, but we'll talk a little bit more about Belk, who had a great game here a couple of years ago. But she'd suffered a lower leg injury that had kept her out until this game. Just in time, as the Hoyas need a few more bodies out there. Tyshell King puts up the three, and actually only a two. 
a long two there. The, the refs were right on it, signaling immediately that the, she was inside the arc. And down on the floor, finally Rollerson comes away with it. They give it to Lauren Works. Three on the way, no good. Rollerson somehow gets back under there for the rebound. We've got a foul on Burton. She caught Lamberty in the head with a stray arm. And that's going to be the fourth foul on the Hoyas. Yeah, I like the activity you see from both sides there. Georgetown was on the floor that led to this great opportunity to get that rebound. An unfortunate foul for Dada Burton there. She's just going for the ball, just happened to run into Lamberty. Kylie Brown is in the game for Creighton now. Faber also gets back on the floor for the Blue Jays. Janning also out there, so pretty much a full rotation. They've left Lamberty and Agnew to join those three players. They swing it to Janning, three on the way, no good. Miss badly on that one. She is not on range yet today is Marissa Janning. So 2017 Georgetown, a very high scoring first quarter. Belk with the ball, playing away from the basket. She is quite the rebounder. Adamako stops, 17 footer on the way, and she knocks it down. So Adamako on the eight points for her. Creighton looking to get back into this, finds themselves down with their largest deficit. Agnew's going to have to put it up, but that one partially blocked, so that's going to end the first quarter as Georgetown fought back from an early deficit to take a 22-17 lead. We're going to pause for this timeout. You are watching Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Back at the DJ Sokol Arena, we are at the end of the first quarter. Georgetown with the 22 to 17 lead. Grayton had the early lead, but unfortunately for them, got very cold. As just as hot as they were, they went 0 for 8 in the quarter. Yeah, he bumped that up even more. They were 5 of 7 at one point. They finished that second quarter or first quarter 5 of 17 from the field, so they went ice cold there. On the, on the other hand, Georgetown never cooled off. They stayed hot. 10 of 16 that shooting in the first quarter there. Creighton led 15 to 9 midway through the first quarter there. Georgetown closes on a 13 to 2 run to claim this five point lead. And you have to look, uh, Natasha Adair got a lot of players involved, not normally having a very long bench, but we look at, uh, she got nine players into the game in that first quarter. Yeah, in including uh, Yasmin Belk, who hadn't played since the third game of the season. We'll take a look at some of those scoring highlights from the first quarter. Yeah, we'll take a look at it here as that one put up by Adamako and you'll see a lot of them. I mean, she didn't really touch the ball in about the first three or four minutes, but soon they found her and she was just really hot as she wound up with eight points in that first quarter matched by her teammate Burton also with eight points. And we see Dorothy Adamako taking a bit of a breather here right now is well deserved as she played the entire first quarter and she's going to need to play almost every minute out there today again if you're just joining us Deanna White has not played in this game probably won't play in this game Hoya's leading scorer out with an illness Janning starting to drive gives it up to Lamberty 
Faber, who started really hot, missed her last two, and we're going to get a foul, and that foul's going to go against Georgetown on Petke, so Cynthia Petke picks up the foul. Yeah, Petke, a little bit too into the body there of Faber. Petke, a, a junior college transfer, originally from Cameroon. In and out, no good. Agnew gets the rebound, no good there. She had looked like a clear putback, but bothered by the defender. That's 12 consecutive field goal misses by the Creighton Blue Jays here at home. So Burton with the basketball now as Creighton all of a sudden has gone ice cold. That one rebounded and on the floor finally Janning comes out of there with it as she and Faber kind of fighting over between the two of them. Janning starting to drive, finds Lamberty wide open, look, in and out, and again, no good, and taken out of there by Yasmin Bell. Credit Georgetown's defense. It's not just that Creighton has gone cold. Georgetown's defense, their length is really frustrating Creighton's ability to pass the ball and move it around. You'll notice Creighton has not gotten a lot of easy attempts, and that's because of what Georgetown's doing. Burton puts up the long one, knocks it down, two-pointer on that one, but Burton, we can kind of remember when you back off a of Dada Burton, you can't anymore. She has developed a very good outside shot. Yeah, 10 points now, already four above her season average. She was averaging nine in league play, already above that now. Agnew will put up the three, knocks it down. So Jalen Agnew, the freshman, finally breaks that string of 13 straight misses for Creighton, gets them back to within four. Belt down low, and she is hard to handle, and Jim Flannery gonna call a 30-second timeout right here. As uh, he just does not like the defense, and actually, we're gonna get a look at the replay as Belk puts that one up off the glass there. And again, we Looks like we've got a full timeout on the floor, so with that, we're gonna take a break. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. the rules again. Yeah, well, that's, I, uh, I mean. I don't understand it either. I, I don't think Jim was asking for a full time. No, out. he wanted third. Yeah. Five, four, three, so now what do they do when the five minute mark comes? Take a full, another full? I don't think so. I think. Okay. Back at the DJ Sokol Arena, Georgetown on top of Creighton, 26 to 20. And besides the difference in the score, the major difference is the field goal percentage. Yeah, and again, Georgetown's defense really frustrating Creighton. They're not able to get into the paint and kick it out for open threes. The threes that they're taking have been somewhat contested, not all of them, but just the way that the spacing on Georgetown's defense has really uh, frustrated the Blue Jays. And you take a look. Creighton's 21 field goal attempts, 15 have been from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Georgetown, of their 26 points, 12 have come in the paint. That's why you see they shoot. They're shooting 63% from the field right now. And Georgetown keeps going deeper on their bench. Morgan Smith, the 10th player already on the court, the freshman. So a little bit of a change for Georgetown as they're getting a lot more players on the floor. Lamberty 
we've seen this with Creighton early on in the season. They have not played well in the first quarter, even the first half. It's been the second half where they, but I'm sure that's not a trend that Kim Flannery likes. And we've got a foul down low. It's going to go against Georgetown. And again, the ball goes into Rollerson, and she's almost almost immediately fouled once again. So even when Creighton does manage to get it down into the paint, you pick up a foul here. You see both players were on the floor. Rollerson gets up and gets fouled immediately, just a touch foul, but a little too much contact for the refs like it. Pick and roll right there. Rollerson dishes it back out. But gives the Georgetown defense credit. They are Johnny on the spot here. Put up by Jenning, gets it to go with kind of a on balance, one-handed shot there. Yeah, the up and under there. Yeah. Took Morgan Smith off of her feet, got her out of position and allowed Janning an easy look. But Creighton scrambling to execute in the half court. Burton gets it stolen. Works comes up with it. Lamberty coming the other way. Does not have numbers. Going to slow it up. Lamberty top of the key. Again, that length of Georgetown giving them fits. Down under 10 seconds on the shot clock. So again, Creighton not able to get anything going early. Puts it up, no good. Rollerson with the rebound, puts it up and in. Brianna Rollerson amongst three Hoyas down there. Got the offensive board, put it back up and in. Rollerson with five of Creighton's first 12 rebounds too. So she's been really the only player trying to get into the paint right now. And she is their only really true post player. But the Jays are going to have to, again, try to get something established down low. And a long run by Ramil, and we've got a foul on the floor, and that one's going to go against Creighton. Yeah, Lauren Works trying to box out there, latched on to Tyshell King, tried to prevent her from grabbing that rebound. Adamako back into the ball game, and she will replace Tyshell King. We mentioned Ramil, you saw her take that shot. She has not hit a three-pointer all year long. She's not taking that many, but that's probably not her game. Ramil now in her more familiar post position. Another little jump hook and gets it to go. She's gotten two of those off the baseline. I don't know how she got that to stick. That was impressive. It stuck on the heel of the rim softly and fell right in there for the rookie. Back up on top by four is Georgetown. Jenning takes it all the way. The basket puts it up, lays it off the rim. You almost saw it falling out of her hand as she went up. That was a good, well-run play by the Blue Jays. They're able to seal off, get a pick, and get Janning to the basket. But you saw her losing the ball off her fingertips as she went up for the lay-in. I'm sure uh, Georgetown feeling as well as they've shot. They're only up by four. Ramil, and this time blocked by Rollerson. Ball on the floor, and Rollerson finally comes up with a loose ball. Rollerson said she's seen enough of that jump hook and took it away from her meal. Another pick and roll this time. Uh, Rollerson had not come off the pick quick enough and the ball was inadvertently thrown away by Janning. So a third turnover on Janning as Agnew will return. Yeah, Janning just didn't quite lead Rollerson enough to the basket there. They would have had, they had the switch they wanted to the Blue Jays, but unable to execute cause the fourth turnover by the Blue Jays. As you mentioned, three of them coming from their fifth year senior. Burton with Agnew on her. And talking about a player with length, that's what Jim Flannery likes about Jalen Agnew. Not are her offensive stats, but, and that one, no basket. They say the foul was on the floor before the shot. So we get a chance to look at that to show you where the foul is there on favor. Down low is where they whistled it before Woodard attempted that shot. So foul going against Faber, her first. Second team foul of this quarter. Adamako out on the three-point line, gives it back to Burton, and she'll reset. But Agnew, as we talked about, one of those defenders that can get in the way of passing lanes with those long arms. That one blocked by Rollerson. We mentioned earlier, great not known for her blocking team, but they had a heck of a game early on where they set a school blocking record in the game. Well, it's unusual to see them amongst the, the block leaders in the, in the Big East as well, but that's where they find themselves right now, second in the league in block shots per game. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock off of that block. That one put up by Woodard, no good, and Agnew chases down the rebound. Works. 
Another one of the seniors on this team, one of four, only three in uniform. Agnew gets blocked off, has to throw it back, and that's going to wind up being an over and back violation. So yet another turnover on Creighton as Bailey Norby will check back in for Rollerson. And again, it's because of the Georgetown defense not allowing Creighton to really move freely as they like to do with their motion offense. 418 left second quarter. Georgetown still maintaining that four-point lead. Adamako, no good, so they've cooled off, but Ramil with the offensive board gets it back to Woodard. Woodard spin move underneath, gets it to fall in. Nice move by Woodard, just her four points, but what a slick move by the much improved senior. Faber out on the perimeter, working against Ramil, finds Works. Works takes the two-point shot in and out, no good. Burton with the rebound. Finds Smith, wide open underneath, puts it up and in. Good looking pass by Burton. We're gonna get Jim Flannery with a timeout here. They're, they signal 30 seconds. We're gonna take them at their words. We'll just keep it right here. Uh, take as, a look uh, at this pass. Yeah. Nice catch there by King, or Smith, excuse me, as well. Up high, kept it up high in for the finish. Her first points of the year <laughs> for Smith. You and I talked, we were watching Jim Flannery right there. Uh, Creighton, while they have a three and one record, have not played well in the first half of a lot of games this year. Yeah, they've had to make adjustments at halftime. Fortunately for them, for the most part, they've come out and played better in the second half, but one of these times it's going to burn them and they find themselves down by eight already, their largest deficit of the game. But again, credit, all the credit goes to Georgetown here. It's not that Creighton has come out flat or looked just a little bit off, it's because of what the visitors are doing. And this is a team, again, they're 0-3 in conference, but they put together one of the best strength of schedules in the league to prepare themselves for this coming into league play. Faber near corner starting to drive against Woodard, and she's gonna get quick. That was a good call as she put out that forearm, and that's the second foul on Faber. Yeah, and you'll see here on the replay that she extends this left arm just to push off uh, Woodard and try to create space for herself, and the official's right there on top of it. So some pressure in the backcourt by Creighton, but they'll back off now as Burton gets a hold of the ball and will bring it up. Interesting matchup with Agnew, much taller guard out there on Burton. We'll see if that has any effect helping the Creighton defense. Wide open, Morgan Smith, no good. Rebounded though by Belk as she went over Kylie Brown. Brown had the position there, but Brown failed to leave her feet to try to grab that board. And as you mentioned, with the Yasmin Belk, her first game back since the third game of the season comes away with the offensive rebound. And we mentioned a couple of years ago, she had 19 rebounds here in a game and three pointer put down by Adamako. And that is a nine point, or actually an 11 point lead for Georgetown. And it's a 9-0 run by the Hoyas to extend to this 11 point advantage. So as hot as Creighton was starting out, Lauren Works puts it up off the glass on a driving baseline runner. Well, it's almost the third, it's the third possession in recent minutes that Creighton has done. They've caught the ball in the corner, gone along the baseline, tried to get something going that way to, to penetrate the defense of the Hoyas. Knocked away, but recovered by Adamako. Low post, they work it to Belk. They try to double team her, blocked by Kylie Brown. They're gonna call a tie up. It'll still be Georgetown ball with nine on the shot clock. As Janning and Rollerson will check back in for Faber and Brown. And with 2.02 left, that may be all we see of Audrey Faber for the first half as she has those two fouls she's picked up. Step back by Adamako. That one left short, no good, and Janning comes away with a rebound. Lauren works. Let's go a three. That one way short and pulled down by Adamako. So Creighton trying to shoot early in the shot clock. They feel that that's better. They have not been able to execute in the half court, so they're trying to catch Georgetown a little off guard, but missed that one there. Top of the key to Burton. With Janning back in the game, she has the responsibility of her. Morgan Smith, who's played a lot of minutes, 
throws that one away, however, and turned over Georgetown at the 118 mark. And to, to emphasize your point, Brad, that the bench on Georgetown has been short. Smith, this is just the seventh game she's played in all year. She averaged seven minutes in those first six games. She'd only attempted five shots on the season coming into today. She's already one for three in the first half here. They go down low, Rollerson gets it blocked out of bounds. Adamako with the defensive responsibility. And she did a good job there blocking that one. 16 on the shot clock as Creighton will maintain possession. And we got a foul as Morgan Smith knocks over Lauren Works. So that is the third team foul on the Hoyas on Smith, her second. Uh, just a lack of playing time there, maybe. Uh, still a freshman, still just in her seventh game of her career, just trying to figure out the speed of the game. They go low post, rollers and puts it up and in. Good passing that time as Agnew gets the assist. Cuts that lead back to seven. You can almost see an offense there that Creighton finally, with a minute to go in the first half, sensed they need to speed their offense up a little bit. That pass and finish much faster than what we've seen. Rollers in a great defensive play to knock that one away and get it to her teammate Lamberty. Now Creighton looking to convert off of that turnover. Agnew will take the three ball. No good and rebounded by Woodard. Hoyas can hold for the last shot of the first half here, and they will slow it down there with Dada Burton. Dada Burton's first half, 10 points, 5 of 7 from the field, 5 assists. So she has stepped up in the place of her teammate, Deanna White, who's out with the flu here today. Morgan Smith almost walked with the basketball. They don't call it. The clock's going to run out, and she puts it up. No good. And Jim Flannery wondering with, with about three seconds to go why there wasn't a traveling violation. But Georgetown will go to the locker room on top, 35 to 28. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. At halftime here at the DJ Soak Arena, the Georgetown Hoyas on top of the Great Blue Jays, 35 to 28. We'd like now to show you what's referred to as the sophomore class feature. The Big East freshman class was one of the most talented we've seen in quite some time, accounting for over 5,000 points and 2,500 rebounds. Rookies adjusted quickly to the college system and impacted the game quickly. What's to come for their sophomore year?
Uh, yeah, I'm on headset. Rob's just a few steps down here. Perfect. And then we will see misses too. So yeah, heavy on Creighton at first, and then Georgetown the rest of the way, which is how the game played out, yeah. Yep. Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep heads to the Al McGuire Center on the campus of Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, March 4th through the 7th. All session ticket booklets start at $25 for general admission and $50 for reserved seating. Visit GoMarquette.com or call 414-288-GO-MU to purchase tickets.
Brad Burwell, Rob Sims back at the DJ Silver Arena here on the campus of Creighton University at halftime. Georgetown with a seven point lead, 35 to 28. And one of the uh, players on the Creighton University team uh, is uh, one of the 30 candidates for the Senior Class Award. Yeah, the Senior Class Award, a prestigious award that uh, goes to, to players who play for their entire career in college. Melissa Janney, we've talked about her quite a bit today. One of the, the only player in school history with 1,600 points and 400 assists in her career. Jessica January of DePaul is the other Big East representative on there, one of the best players in the league. She's out right now, so that's a, a tough loss for DePaul, but they are average. she's averaging uh, ranked, excuse me, 18th in the country in assists per game, but DePaul still undefeated in the league without her shows you their depth. Let's take a look at some of the uh, highlights of that first half. It was a really fast scoring uh, start for both teams as both teams, it was 15 to 14 at the midway part of that first period. Creighton hit five of their first seven shots. Unfortunately, got a lot worse for them after that. Yeah, you're seeing most of their makes here in that, that starting run for the Blue Jays as they went up by as many as six there early on. But after starting five of seven, they finished the, the, the half just hitting five of their final 24 shots. Meanwhile, you're taking a look at what Georgetown was able to do on offense. They really took control of that game on the latter half of the first quarter and then all of the second quarter were in control, not only on the offensive end, which is what you're seeing here, their, their nice drive to the basket, their outside shooting, which they've gotten to knock down a few of those. You see Dada Burton just inside the three-point arc, but their defense really to, to frustrate Creighton into to missing shots and not taking the shots that they want to take, that's what allowed them to build this halftime lead. Dada Burton, we talked about her in closing the, the first half. 10 points, five assists for her. Dorothy Adamako, the other star for the Hoyas there in the first half with 11 points. And leading the way for Creighton Faber and Rollerson with nine points each. As we'll take a look at the comparison between the two, first the score, but certainly the disparity in the field goal shooting. 50% for Georgetown, 32. The rebounding, a little bit of an edge to Georgetown, but it, it was really the shooting from the field and primarily the defense of Georgetown holding Creighton down. They made the adjustments that they needed to and got some valuable minutes off the bench uh, from their players, uh, which they're not used to getting. Yeah, they've had about seven players that they turn to often, and they they played 11 players in the first half there. So impressive to see them go deep on the bench. And that was one of the keys that we said. And Georgetown has the better advantage with players played, and they have the seven-point advantage here at the half. Yeah, and sometimes it's not points. They only got four points from those reserves, but just spelling people like Anamako and Burton to give them a little bit of time on the bench to rest and not losing the lead is kind of the key thing. And, and one of the other keys we talked about, Brad, was Creighton being able to get into the paint, which would open up their outside shot. They haven't been able to do that. Georgetown outscoring Creighton in the paint 16 to 10. So the Blue Jays, when they've gotten it down low, we've seen Rollerson get fouled down there. But if, if they can get it down low and Rollerson can kick it out for a better look on the perimeter, it's going to open up their three-point shooting, and it'll allow them, quite frankly, to, to try to attempt more shots in the paint. But the length is really, the length of the Georgetown defenders really frustrating for the Blue Jays in the first half. You saw Jim Flannery there, uh, hopefully trying to work some more halftime magic that he's been able to do throughout this season, coming back in the second half of a lot of games, making the adjustments that needs to be made. So we'll see if uh, that comes Today, we'll give you a few scores here leading up uh, at halftime. Providence Villanova tied at 28. St. John's ahead of Marquette, 40 to 31. And DePaul right now on a runaway at halftime. They are ahead of Seton Hall, 60 to 35. So second half underway as they get the ball to Faber. She had to exit with those two fouls late in that second quarter. Faber from three, no good. Rollerson offensive board and gets it fouled. And they're going to foul, call the foul, I think, on Jones reaching. Nope. They're going to call it from behind, I believe, actually on Ramil. Ramil picking up her first foul. She played eight minutes there in the first half, scored four points. Rollerson on the floor at nine points. Give her seven rebounds now with that offensive uh, rebound there, put her at the line, attempting to get to another double-double for the fifth-year senior from right here in Omaha. And Rollerson. Breaks into double figures with that free throw. She now has 10 points. And she is a perfect five for five from the free throw line today. Give her 11, cuts that lead to five. 
Burton will bring it up, guarded by Janning. Creighton traditionally in that man-to-man -man defense. They don't vary from that. Ramil trying to post up Woodard on the low post, but gets it back out to Jones. We talked about White not being in there right now. Georgetown has not needed her. They've gotten enough contributions from Adamako and Burton. Ramil from the baseline, no good. Rebounded by Rollerson. Just left it short. She had the space to get the shot up. She didn't follow through and left it short off the basket. Lauren Works puts up a three from the corner and knocks it down. Lauren Works. And we're going to get a quick timeout, I think, from Natasha Adair. Great. So with that, Creighton has cut it to a two-point lead. 35-33. We're going to pause. You see, you see Lauren Works cutting through the paint there. She wanted the ball. She was wide open. Instead, she'll settle for a, an extra point there, shooting it from the outside. We're going to step aside for this break. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> Creighton a quick start here in the uh, second half. Let's take a look at Brianna Rollerson. However, she has really been tough underneath for Georgetown to handle. Yeah, 11 points, eight rebounds, a couple blocked shots here. She's ranked second in the Big East in field goal percentage, third in blocked shots, sixth in rebounds. She missed a lot of last year with an injury, but you see all that she has brought to the table here early going for the Blue Jays, and she's been their best player this afternoon, and they have needed every bit of production they have gotten from her. Yeah, 11 points, eight rebounds, couple of blocks on the afternoon for the senior. As uh, Creighton all of a sudden in the first minute of the second half has taken a seven point deficit, narrowed it down to two, and Natasha Dare said, I've seen enough of this, I gotta call a timeout. Well, Brad, you made mention of it. Creighton trailed in their first two home games in the Big East at half. They trailed at half, and they had to overcome that halftime deficit. So they're not, uh, they're accustomed to, to where they are, unfortunately, but uh, they've been there before. It was a quick start. They started the first half just as rapidly. Now the key for Creighton is, can they continue to, to keep going? Let's take a look, a uh, quick uh, look in here at the Providence Villanova game. It was tied 28 at halftime. Providence has broken out on top early in that third quarter. So a very tight game between these two. A lot of snow up in that part of the country as Villanova managed to get into Providence. They may have a hard time getting out though as we kind of take a look at that one side by side and we're back to action here at the DJ Soak Arena. We'll keep you updated on those scores throughout the afternoon as Creighton has cut this lead to two. That one put up left short off the glass and Works comes away with a rebound so that missed by Adamako. As favor now Creighton looking to tie or even take the lead. Lamberty looking on that low post for Rollerson, gets it on the roll. Rollerson dish back out and throws it away. Unfortunately, Woodard, she almost walked with the basketball, knew she had to get rid of it. Long one put up by Jones and puts it down. Jones is the 28% shooter from the outside, just her 12th make from the outside today. She's a Wake Forest transfer. She'll have one more year of eligibility after this year, after sitting out last year, but she could be key down the stretch. Faber goes back to hitting three. She hit three right off the bat in the first quarter. Comes back here and knocks another one down, her fourth of the game. Well, you're, you're right, she made her first three attempts, and then she only attempted two for the remainder of that first half. 
she tends to shy away from shooting if she misses a couple. And Coach Flannery's talked to her over and over again about continuing to take those shots, even if they're not falling. And Alamaco missing that one. Actually, that was Woodard on the miss as Faber trying to avoid picking up her third foul. So again, Creighton with a chance to tie or take the lead. With a made bucket here, Lamberty. They go down low, Rollerson. Looked like she got fouled, puts it up again, gets it to go. Rollerson. And she is just really tough for the Hoyas to handle. Well, she did. It looked like she got bumped. If she didn't get bumped, she decided herself to change the direction of that shot, which was heady in itself. But the fact that she stayed with it and got the putback, and uh, again, approaching a double double for her. Well, we've got a tie ball game, a long one. That one misses everything by Anamako, goes out of bounds. So in just three minutes, Creighton has turned this game around here and tied this ball game. Yeah, outscoring the Hoyas 10 to 3 here. A nice 10 3 run for the Blue Jays. They're 3 of 5 from the field. Again, hit both of their three point attempts to start this half, just as they were hot to start the first half. Faber slowly bringing the ball into the front court. They find Janning. Janning's only had one field goal in this game as of yet. And that one taken away. Another turnover for Janning. They tried to get it to Faber, cutting along the baseline. Adamako a good drive and puts it up off the glass and in as Georgetown retakes the lead off that turnover by Creighton. Adamako is such a great athlete. She's got such a smooth jump shot, but she can do what she just did there, put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. Lamberty finds Faber, another three on the way by Faber, banks it in. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks aren't open on Sundays, are they? I guess in Omaha they are today. Well, Creighton retakes the lead on the fifth three-pointer of the day by Audrey Faber. Pick and roll going the other way. Belt puts it up, misses it. Woodard blocked down there by Faber and taken away by Lauren Works. So some good defense underneath the basket by the Blue Jays. And it's their defense that's keying this. I know they're hitting their shots, but they're getting stops, which is they weren't doing a lot in the first quarter, especially as Georgetown shot better than 60%. Lamberty back to Janning. Janning. Again, trying to get the ball to Rollerson on the low post, under 10 on the shot clock. Lauren works. They're going to have to skip past Rollerson from 15. No good. That's not really Aaron. Lauren works is going to get whistled for the foul. Just the team's first of this third quarter. Yeah, for as much praise as we've sung for the Blue Jays' offense in the first half, that, that or excuse me, in the first part of this second half, that possession kind of stalled out there with Janning. Having the ball at the top of the key with about eight, nine seconds to go. She didn't want the ball. She got rid of it to Works, and that just uh, spiraled from there. Creighton clearly not getting the shot they wanted on that possession. And Lauren Works is a good shooter, but probably not your best one on one player. You probably want the ball in the hands of Janning, who can go one on one. They go to Belk on low post, try to double team her. She puts it up from 10 feet, knocks it down from Yasmin Belk. Again, Belk playing her first game since the third game of the season. And uh, she started the first two games of the year. So somebody that they had penciled in to be a part of this program, an important part of this season. Janning trying to work around the screen, gives it up to Bailey Norby. Agnew back on the perimeter. Now Clay Creighton look a little more tentative here. They find Janning, under five. Puts it up on the run, no good. And coming away with the rebound is Jones for Georgetown. Knocked away, put back up, good, and a foul. That foul, I believe, is gonna go on Lauren Works as Georgetown after, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 44-41, Georgetown on top. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Yeah, I don't know why all of a sudden they slowed down their offense. They were moving the ball and going, and then they decided to, yeah. and they're not doing well in half court execution. No. They got to keep moving it.
Okay. Okay. left in this third quarter. Georgetown has retaken the lead 44 to 41. Creighton had it briefly basically on the backs of Audrey Faber. Yeah, Faber's come out again. She started hot in the first half. She started hot here in the second half, knocking down a couple of three-pointers. We'll take a look. She now has five three-pointers in the ballgame. There's her some shots she knocked down in the first half. Five of nine from the field. All of those Makes have come from three-point range. 15 points leads all players right now in the ball game. So Creighton had taken the lead uh, based on her shots, a three-pointer by Lauren Works, but Georgetown, after a little bit of a slow start, has come back, and again, it's been their defense that the last two or three times down the floor for Creighton has shut down their offensive execution. And it's led into some better offensive opportunities for the Hoyas as well, allowing them to regain the lead. They mentioned came out on fire, took that one point lead, 41-40, but Georgetown has answered now with four points and a chance for a 5-0 quick spurt here for the Hoyas. Woodard, I mentioned how important she is. She's averaging this year 15 points per game, eight and a half rebounds per game. Her career average is coming into the season just under 10 points per game and five and a half rebounds per game. So dramatic improvement from her has really been key to this Hoya program this season. Just a 61% free throw shooter, however, misses on that one. Lead remains at three as Faber picked up by Jones, gets it out to Works. Jalen Agnew tries to go low post, and we've got a reach in foul as the big mismatch. Faber had Jones on her back, so quite a height advantage there of about six, seven inches. Yeah, Faber listed at 6'2. Jones 5'8. Creighton got the matchup they wanted, and Jones frustrated trying to slow Faber down. If she didn't foul, it was going to be an easy look for the Blue Jays. Second team foul on the Hoyas. Creighton gets a fresh 30 on the clock. Bailey Norby into that post. Faber starts to drive. Gets cut off at the baseline. Janning looking to get herself started. Janning tries to drive through, finds Agnew. She'll take the three-pointer. That one woefully short and pulled down out of there by Burton. Georgetown helping on defense, just tremendous. Plugging those gaps, not allowing Creighton to dribble ben penetrate. Phil. That one put up by Jones, no good. Rebounded by Georgetown, up and good and fouled. And that's going to be one Jim Flannery's not going to like because the freshman Agnew just did not block out Adamato. We'll see it right here is off the miss. Agnew should have had the block out. Not only didn't she get it, but she committed the foul. Yeah, Adamako a chance to score her team leading 16 points of the game, but she'll stay at 15, which is right about her season average. So Creighton had cut into that seven point half tight lead, had taken a lead. Now find themselves down five again as they get Bree Rollerson and Sid Lamberty back at the scorer's table. And again, an, almost another turnover, but and we will get Lamberty and Rollerson in as Norby and Janning will check out. But just the length, once again, we keep saying it over and over again, but the length that Georgetown has that they close in on you, not only the length, but the help that they're giving on defense, cutting into those passing lanes, that's what almost caused another turnover there for Creighton. Works, gets bumped, gives it back out to Faber. Faber, they're going to have to get a shot off, puts it up on the run, gets it to go. Her first two-pointer of the day, give her 17 points. Yeah, the offense for Creighton right now is all Faber and Rollerson. They're going to have to get some other contributors, or those two are really going to have to take over if they want to overcome a deficit for a win here. Phillip working down low, gets it knocked away. 
and we're going to get a walking violation. So a good double team came down on Bell and frustrated her and didn't know what to do with the ball, and she traveled. And, and credit Rollerson for standing her ground to allow that double team to come over. Rollerson giving away a, a few inches in size there. Lamberty gets it to favor. Again, trying to work the pick and roll. This time they cover Rollerson. They go down low. Nice pass by Agnew. Missed by Rollerson. And rebounded out of there by Burton. One of the few point point misses you'll see Bree Rollerson ever have. Well, she had to go through some defenders, too. There's a contested shot. If it was blocked, even if it wasn't blocked, it was contested enough to frustrate the attempt. Put up by Jones. Short on that one. Rebound. We've got a foul. Lamberty gets knocked to the floor by Adamako. Well, just the first for Adamako. Again, Adamako 15 points. Woodard, who has been averaging just under 15 points per game. Woodard just six points today. And again, if you're just joining us and you missed the first half, Deanna White, the leading scorer for the Hoyas coming in, has not played today because of an illness. Janning back in, so getting that starting lineup back intact for Creighton after she takes a brief rest. Low post, they dish back, works three on the way, bang. Lauren Works ties it up, and that is her strength right there. You saw it. Inside out, inside out play there for the Blue Jays. They got it into Rollerson in the paint. She's able to kick it out for an open look for three. Tie ball game. Adamako trying to drive baseline, blocked by Rollerson. Rollerson with the rebound, gets fouled from behind by Bell. Bree Rollerson working very hard at both ends of the floor. Give her a double-double now with that board. 13 points, 10 rebounds, gets the block. She's doing it all for, for Creighton today. Tie ball game here, 140 left in this third quarter as Sydney Lamberty will bring it up. Janney starts to drive the basket, leaves it short again. She beat her defender as she tried to go for the steal. Janning may have rushed her shot there, too, because she knows the presence the Hoyas have had around the bucket today. Janning just one out of nine on the afternoon. She can still turn it up, and Jays will probably need her. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul on Audrey Faber, and that's going to be the third on Faber. And Faber trying to stay over the screen there fight through the handoff, the potential handoff, picks up the foul. Woodard back into the ball game for the Hoyas as Jones will take a seat. Inboundings will be Adamako. Also in Jade Martin. So Georgetown really going deep into their bench, which they have not had to do or haven't done at least much of the season, especially once conference play is hit. Jade Martin trying to post up and she walks for the basketball. So it's good to go deep, but I'm sure you want to put the ball in the hands of an inexperienced player. Albeit she is a senior, but not a lot of playing time. So under 50 seconds to go, Creighton looking to take the lead. They have led very little in this game except early on and then a brief lead here in the third quarter. Channing with the basketball. Faber. Lamberty on the run, puts that one up short on that one. Burton with the rebound. Burton driving all the way to the basket, puts up and in. Donna Burton. That was impressive. The way she tucked the ball there, going between the Blue Jay defenders. Not only tucking the ball, but then coming away with it for the easy, not the easy layup, the challenging layup. She made it look easy. Playing for one shot is Creighton as we go under 10 seconds here. Lamberty does get it to Rollerson. They try to go to Janning underneath. Janning misses another layup. Janning just one out of 10 on the afternoon, and they set that one up perfectly. She had a good look and could not get it to go down. So Georgetown on top, 48 to 46. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What's that? 
No, I I can't think of anything you want to pinpoint. We can look at how bad a day Jennings had. You would think for a fifth year senior, you'd get more consistency from somebody. I mean, she is so up and down. Yeah. That would probably be good. Ten points. She had ten and a half. Huh? She had ten and a half. I thought she had eight. I don't know. Grab her while Rob Sims back at the DJ Sokol Arena. Just getting ready to start the fourth quarter. Georgetown still maintaining a slim two-point lead. They had a seven-point halftime lead, but uh, they owe a lot to today to our three. Free game player of the game, Dada Burton. Yeah, Dada Burton has been everything that the Hoyas have needed her to be today. Again, Deanna White out leading score. You knew that Burton would have the ball in her hand even more than it already is as she leads the team in assists, but uh, she a lot, sometimes gives way to Deanna White to handle the ball, but Dada Burton handling the ball today. 10 points and six assists, throwing four rebounds for the 5'5 junior as well so she has really performed well performed up to the task to help this Hoya team on the road yeah she uh, that last bucket that end to end her only field goal of the third quarter but it was a good one and something to see is they've gotten the rebound and she went end to end and went right past the great defender well and what makes that so special that play was so impressive is you know she has the ball you know what she's capable of doing if you're a blue jay and you know your job is to stop the ball, and Creighton still couldn't do it. She just beat the defenders and got to the rim. So for Creighton starting this fourth quarter, their original starting lineup of rollers in favor, Lamberty works in Janning, and it will be Martin, Burton, Belk, Adamaco, and Woodard. And that one, finally, they do get it in to Burton. Burton driving all the way to the bucket, and we're going to get a foul as she creates the foul. Rollerson going to pick it up on that. That's going to send her to the free throw line. Yeah, and you'll see why Rollerson picks up the foul is because Burton just blows by Janet. Janet is a good defender, but Burton just takes the angle, needs some help from Rollerson, and Rollerson picking up her first foul of the game. Burton, a 57% free throw shooter, looked like a 90% free throw shooter on that one as she knocked that one down. Once she, again, has upped her scoring average in her the first three conference games to nine points per game in Big East play, give her 12 today. But on the season, she's only averaging six points per game, so she's doubled that average today. Four-point lead for Georgetown coming out of the timeout going into the fourth quarter. Channing, as we indicated, just one out of 10 on the afternoon including three turnovers. They go to Rollerson down low. That one blocked out of bounds and still be great ball that blocked by Anamako. Yes. See the good entry pass there. Rollerson trying to go up with her offhand. Thought she might have enough space, but the length again of Anamako to swat it away. So Lamberty will trigger it in from the left of her basket. Janning trying to work around the screen, finally finds favor. Back to Janning. Janning probably should have taken the three. Lamberty does, will take the three. No good. And coming away with that is Adamako. And when you're one for 10, as Janning is, then maybe some doubt starts to creep in your mind and you don't want to pull the trigger, even if you are one of the all time leading scorers in program history. Having a day like today, it's hard to pull that trigger, even when you are wide open. Anamako puts it up on the run, no good. Rebounded out of there by Martin on the offensive board. So fresh 30 on the clock for the Hoyas. Swing the ball around the perimeter, Woodard. Stops, left elbow jumper put up, no good. Rebounded by Janning. Faber, they go top of the key. Lamberty starting to drive. Oh, 
They'll find Faber, three from the corner. That one too hard off the iron and pulled down by Woodard. So Creighton in the first couple of minutes here of the fourth quarter, unable to execute anything on the offensive end. Bell playing away from the basket now. Ten on the shot clock for the Hoyas as Woodard takes it down the lane and we're going to get a whistle and a foul as the crowd, uh, mostly partisan Creighton fans, not liking that one. I think looking more for the traveling violation. Yeah, we'll take a look at the replay here. See Woodard maybe took an extra step there, but get the foul. Look at all the shooting foul too. I thought that foul may have been called on the floor, but Woodard going to the free throw line. Again, a thousand point score in her career now. Got 22nd in school history there, 21st in rebounds in school history, fifth in block shots. Five double doubles this year for Woodard. Uh, been a key for this team this season. Not a good free throw shooting day. Just three out of seven from the charity stripe for the Hoyas. Woodard's missed both of their opportunities. And this is the second. So a close game here, a four point game. Free throw shooting definitely going to come into play. Lamberty working down on the perimeter, finds Agnew into the game. Put up by Rollerson, too hard off the glass, and fighting for it. No whistle call, let him play on. Yeah, a lot of contact there, nothing egregious though, they'll let him play. 7.30 left in this fourth quarter. Creighton still looking for their first points of this quarter. They try to go low post, Martin. Trying to back in, and we've got a tie-up. It'll be Creighton Ball on the alternating possession. Trying to take Lauren Works. Uh, obviously, Martin has a lot more height than Works, but Works held her ground, and she got some uh, defensive help. Yeah, Works able to swat her hand in there to, to get the ball loose, and Rollerson closed in to, for the tie-up and the turnover. Just the seventh turnover for the Hoyas this afternoon. Creighton with just eight. Both teams doing a tremendous job of taking care of the ball. Nobody with a field goal here in the first three minutes. Works from the baseline, puts it down. Well, there's a first field goal of the quarter. For either team there is right. both teams struggling from the floor. Georgetown's only points in the quarter on two Burton free throws. So 50-48 Georgetown here. 6.45 left in the ball game. We should say in regulation. That one almost knocked away by Works. Belk with under 10 on the shot clock, gets it back out to Burton. Burton asking for a screen. Burton trying to drive, puts it up, and no good this time on the rebound, and we're gonna get a whistle on a foul, and I believe that's gonna go against Martin reaching over Bree Rollerson. Yeah, and I know that, that Burton missed the shot, but the fact that she was able to get to the rim even impresses me so much. I, I was watching Coach, she called for the isolation. She wanted Burton to finish this play. Just got to the rim, just could not finish. Channing goes down low, Rollerson puts it up. Yes, and she is fouled. Rollerson waited just long enough for the defender to come over her back, went back up, able to put it down. We'll take a look at that one right here. Look at the hesitation and Right there, Adamako goes right over her back. And the nice bounce pass feed there. And it may have been out of necessity, and it may have been strategy as well, but Rollerson's been blocked more today than she's typically used to. So the hesitation allowed her to get that foul and a chance for a free throw. And she missed her first free throw of the day after hitting her first five. So we are tied at 50. 6-10 left in the ball game. Martin getting some extended playing time out there. Burton drives by Janning again. This time we're going to get a whistle and a foul, I believe, is going to go on Janning. That might be. Now that's on Rollerson, they're going to call. The go to play for the rest of the game for the Hoyas because Creighton can't stop it right now. Burton can penetrate at will almost, and uh, it's causing Blue Jays to either foul her or foul the person she's dishing it to. And we mentioned Burton's uh, not been good from the free throw line on the season, just 57%, but she's hit all three of them today and has one more here to extend that lead for the Hoyas. She's such a valuable point guard, too, to have out there. And that miss, and they say off the hands of Agnew. And again, the partisan uh, Blue Jay crowd here in attendance not liking that call. 
We'll see if we can see who it went off of here as Martin kinda, over the back of. Kind of hard to tell on that one, but Tim Daly pretty emphatic with that call. And I didn't see Agnew grimace or shake her head that she was denying it went off of her. And we talked about Janning, one of the best defenders. That's one of her fortes, but Burton not afraid to go in. She takes it again, puts it up off the glass, no good. Rebounded again, offensive glasses. All five players crashing the glass for Georgetown. And we're gonna get Audrey Faber back at the scorer's table. She's been sitting on the sidelines with three fouls. You see again, Burton getting isolated. She may end up taking this drive to the basket once again. Burton takes a 15-footer and knocks it down. She has been money today. And she has been the player of the game. I know Adamako has scored more points. Actually, they both have 15 points now, but Burton has been the difference maker today. Agnew in the corner. Lamberty. Squeeze it to Janning. There still needs to, I know it's late, but they need to get something out of Janning here. She gives it up. Lamberty baseline jumper. That one short off the iron, pulled down by Belk, and we've got a foul on the floor against Georgetown. Pretty emphatic. I think that's on Belk. And we do get Faber back into the game, but we've right now got a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout with them with the score. Georgetown 53, Creighton 50. You're watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. To miss the fourth foul in favor. When did they, you get that? They may have had it wrong initially. Okay. Had to change it. Okay. Back at the DJ Sokol Arena, 432 left in this fourth quarter. Right now, Georgetown with a three-point lead, 53 to 50. You can see it right there. Uh, the shooting percentage is getting a little bit closer, and what's kept Creighton in the game is that 38% three-point shooting. Yeah, that's nine three-pointers that they've made on 24 attempts, including five by Audrey Faber, who's coming back onto the floor now with four fouls, actually. We thought last time she checked out, stats may have updated them to, to give her four, may have had that incorrect at some point on there, but you see what's going on right now. This is a close game, just a three-point Georgetown lead, and they are only shooting 40% at the free throw line. They've hit four out of 10. Creighton has hit five of six, so if this comes down to the line, Georgetown's going to need to step up to hit a little, hit a few more there to keep the pressure on the Blue Jays. Yeah, Creighton right now are getting production out of three of their players, Faber, Rollerson, and Lauren Works. They're combined 15 out of 30. The other key players, Lamberty, uh, Janning, and Agnew, though, just a combined three out of 22. Yeah, and it's, again, it's not because they're just having an off day. It's because this Georgetown defense has been tough. And the, the way they have helped off the ball and clogged the lanes, not allowing Creighton to dribble, penetrate, to kick out for an open three, they have really frustrated. That's why Janning right now, one for 10. Janning likes to slice through the lane and, and get there and have an opportunity to either shoot or pass. And they have cut her off and not allowed her to get to the bucket. Lauren works off the inbounds, a long three, no good. And Creighton had that 
motion going to about 15 seconds before they even inbounded the ball and Work stopped herself open, just couldn't put it away. Burton with the basketball. Jones back into the ball game. Jones will let fly with a three and knocks it down. So Jones, the last minute starter, named a starter on this team, knocks that one down for her. That's her second three pointer of the day. And again, just a 28% shooter from long range on the season, averages four points per game. She has eight in this one, starting in the place of Deanna White. So a quick turnaround here. Creighton had a chance to tie it, couldn't make it. They go low post, Faber puts it up. Yes, and she is fouled. So it, it was Rollerson being the point person and getting the assist on that one. Audrey Faber posting up. Yeah, Faber. You see here again, as you mentioned, posting up the nice size advantage again. Creighton got the switch as Jones was guarding her, gets the bucket, the finish, and trying to get 20 points here for the fourth time this season. So Faber. Free throw on its way, and it is good for Audrey Faber, an 83% free throw shooter. So back to with a one possession game. But right now, Creighton's got to figure out a way to shut down Dada Burton. Right now, they got Agnew back out on her. She just blows right by her, gives it up. Wide open look for Belt, no good, but another offensive rebound. Guess who? Dada Burton. She's everywhere. Give her six rebounds to go along with those six assists and 15 points. Jones trying to go around Lambert. He does just that, goes to the bucket, puts it up and in. So Creighton's half court defense letting them down here. And Jones with 10 points now. Her season high is 15. Back to a five point lead for the Hoyas. So Creighton needs to answer to stay in this game. Find Agnew, far corner, belt on her. Lauren works back to Agnew. They'll look for Faber. Right now, it looks like a few Jays afraid to take the shot. Agnew with a miss there and rebounded out of there by Jones coming the other way. Jones, fast break, stops, left elbow jumper. No good, rebounded by Agnew. So the crowd here trying to get Spur on Creighton. 2.30 left in the ball game. Down by five are the homestanding Blue Jays. They have not lost at home this season, and we got a whistle and a foul as Faber goes crashing to the floor. Both players, Belk and her getting up. Belk's gonna get called for the foul. That is her third, and the 15 foul on the Hoyas, so that'll be the bonus the rest of the way for Creighton as Faber looks to get her team a little bit closer. We'll look at it right here. She tried to squeeze between two players. Could have gone either on Woodard or Belk. Belk gets the call as the sophomore Faber steps the line, knocks that one down, gets Creighton back to within four. Rollerson will check back in for Janning. Faber looking for her 20th point, actually her 22nd point of the day, and gets that, but more importantly, gets her team back to a one possession game. 58-55, Georgetown, 217 left in the ball game. Burton, as she has had most of the game, has the ball in her hands. Creighton's gonna have to, they've been giving up some offensive rebounds lately, so they're gonna have to be careful with that. Woodard drives to the lane, puts it up, and we're getting a foul on the floor before the shot. That foul is going to go on. Audrey Faber, I believe, and if that's on Faber, that is her fifth foul. And that is really going to hurt Creighton. So the leading scorer in the game, Audrey Faber, the sophomore, will foul out with 22 points and really puts Creighton back up against the wall. Adamako looking. Trying to work behind Belt. Not only do they lose Faber, a prolific scorer, but one of their taller players and better rebounders. So Creighton with a much smaller lineup out there right now. 10 on the shot clock with Burton trying to work around. Belk will try to go baseline. Tries to go underneath and we've got a whistle and a foul. I believe that foul is on Lamberty, I think. And that's, that's gonna such an 
impressive offensive possession by Georgetown, not only to, to waste so much or kill so much of the clock, but then to get fouled with just five seconds left on the shot clock, kind of demoralizing for the Blue Jays as they had so close to a defensive stand, but ending up giving up at least one point here on this possession. And that was Jasmine Belk's first free throw attempt of the season. We mentioned she only played in the first three games. Second free throw up, misses that one, so just one out of two. Four-point lead, Georgetown, 136 left in the ballgame. Creighton needs to make the most of every possession right here. And with Faber out, they're going to have to look to some of their other players. That one missed and pulled down by Woodard. So Wirtz had a good look, just couldn't put it away. 120. Creighton definitely needs a stop here. Adamako. This made even more impressive by their leading scorer, White, not able to play today because of the, the flu. The rest of her teammates have stepped up. We got a walking violation on Jones at the one minute mark exactly. Well, it's surprising to me that they just didn't keep the ball in Dada Burton's hands at that point, instead giving it up, allowing Jones to have the ball, and she's called for the traveling violation. It looks like head coach Jim Flannery will call a timeout for the Blue Jays. Yeah, just a 30 second timeout here at the one minute mark. That leaves uh, Creighton with just one timeout. Both teams in the bonus, so any foul by either team uh, will result in two free throws. But more importantly right now, Creighton, whether it's a two pointer or three pointer, needs to get a good offensive execution. Yeah, and they haven't had that the last couple of times down. They, they had an open look. Lauren Works wasn't able to knock down the three pointer in the last trip down. They fit just one out of their last five field goals and in fact haven't scored a field goal in almost three minutes. So down the stretch when you need your offense, especially when you're trailing, you need to hit some shots to come from behind. They have not been able to do so. And I know it's tough, but uh, senior Marissa Jennings is one out of 10 for the day with Audrey Faber fouled out. She's got to be able to take uh, this and make something happen, whether it's her taking the shot or creating something for somebody else. You've got to put the ball in the hands of Channing, I would think. And Janning certainly can drive the ball to the basket. It will be Agnew triggering it in to Lamberty. Lamberty, while not many points, does have six assists on the day. Does get in in the hands of Janning, looking for the screen. Pick and roll. They try to go to Rollerson, taken away. As the Hoyas were looking for that play. So another turnover by Creighton. And Burton's just going to. Wind some clock here. Well, we watch Coach Adair said, pulling it back out. Go back out towards the half court line because we don't need you to. As Lambert is going to foul her. A little late, maybe, on the foul. As Burton will go to the free throw line, as we already indicated, bonus for both teams the rest of the way. She is three out of four from the charity stripe today. No doubt who the key player is for the Hoyas on today's action. Burton misses that free throw, however. Still a four point lead, so Creighton's going to need two possessions. So you may see some fouls today as Maya Melman, one of the three point shooters on this team, checks in. Not a lot of rebounding out there for Creighton, just a lot of shooters. Interesting if this is missed to see if Creighton can even come away with it for a possession. Misses it, and Agnew does get the rebound. So Creighton, after two misses, still with an opportunity here. They find Melman. Melman starts a drive, gets it blocked out of bounds. So Melman, they came out on the three-point line, so she took it to the basket, got blocked. Martin back in, Belk out. And 27 on the game clock. Not a bad idea by Melman. I know she's out there to shoot threes, but she had had some space to get there. Works a long three, no good. Agnew goes after the rebound, gets it to Melman. And we've got a reach-in foul, so Maya Melman will be going to the free throw line. She'll be shooting a couple here to try to get her team a little bit closer. Now, nothing like a pressure pack situation to take your first free throw attempt of the season. Here you see Agnew save the ball. Melman trying to kick it back out to Janning, but she was tied up and instead, again, as I mentioned, this is her first free throw attempt of the season. She and calmly she puts it down. it down, gets Creighton back into at least that one possession and they're going to bring on a made free throw. Kylie Brown will check in. Jim Flannery trying not to waste his final time out. Melman's free throw in and out, no good. And rebounded there, so 
and we get a quick foul as we thought and that's going to send Martin to the free throw line to shoot a couple she on the season just a 46 percent free throw shooter so they obviously have fouled the right person at least as far as statistics are concerned and again just uh, five out of 11. The team still just five of 14 in this game four of 12 in this half from the free throw line. 17 seconds left. And she does not make the first. So Creighton still hanging on to some hope here. They'll need a three even with a miss. One timeout left, and she misses them both. So, and they are going to use that last timeout. That will allow them to advance the ball to half court and uh, move the ball a little quicker, and they'll be able to set up a play. And you'll see Maya Melman probably coming back into the ball game. Creighton on the day, as far as three-pointers are concerned, a combined nine out of 28, but unfortunately, the one that knocked most of those down is sitting on the bench with five fouls. Yeah, Faber finishing with those 22 points, five of eight from three-point range. So you're looking at the other players on the floor that have shot threes today. Agnew, just one out of six. Works, just two out of seven. Janning, 0 for three from beyond the arc. Lamberty, one for three. So. It's hard to say whose hand it's going to go to right now. I'd probably lean towards, if I'm Coach Flannery, looking at Lauren Works, who's probably been your most consistent three-point shooter over the past few games, including she's 7 of 16 from three-point range coming into today in Big East play, and she shoots it well at home, 43%, typically. Again, just two for seven today, but I'd say look for the Blue Jays to draw up a play for Works to get an open look. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Coach Flannery is going to say he may have a play drawn up, but all of those players have the capability. No, so no matter what type of day you've had, they all have the capability of putting it down. We look at Agnew on the year 56 or 46 percent, Melman 59 percent. That's a little skewed because she hit six out of six in one game uh, against uh, Drake. But uh, certainly a lot of players out there that can put, including Janning, who's had a uh, not a good shooting day, but. Uh, I think you take the first good look that you can find. And the officials right now, two of them are over at the replay monitor right now, so I don't know if they're looking at, the only thing I can think of is the clock. And I noticed on one of the, the stoppages, previous to this stoppage, the officials' whistles are attached to the clock. Yeah, and they did just add 2.2 seconds to the clock. I noticed on a previous stoppage that when the whistle was blown, the clock didn't stop. The official went over there nonchalantly and said, hey, add about one and a half seconds on. And again, that's what they had to do there. So that's something to keep an eye on down the stretch here. If the, if the whistle is not synced up to the, the clock, see how much there I know the officials are doing a very good job of keeping an eye on it because they know that's what's happening but that just added 2.2 more seconds to this game so inbounding the ball they do get it to Lamberty Lamberty trying to she takes it all the way gives it up works a three on the way yes Lauren works ties the ball game with 10 seconds and they're going to call a timeout Georgetown will call a timeout so it was drawn off beautifully Sydney Lamberty drove it all the way to the basket we'll take a look at that play here in just a second give Sydney Lamberty the credit for the assist but Lauren works as you indicated Rob probably the key player the most consistent we'll see Lamberty looking like she's going to take it to the basket but gives it up Lauren works somehow got free and she was money. Well, and we've talked about Dot Alberton. We highlighted her before the game. We highlighted Sydney Lamberty, not because of her scoring, but because of it. precisely what we just saw there is her ability to take care of the ball and pass the ball. She's fourth in the league in assists per game. She leads the league in assist turnover ratio. That was good defense set up by Woodard. Woodard had good positioning on Lamberty, but Lamberty able to get around her for that pass into the corner and credit works because she she had to knock it down still, but still a lot of time here for Georgetown and you know the ball who, whose hand the ball is going to be in for them and that's Dada Burton. Yeah, Burton with the uh, basketball and they will trigger it in from right in front of the Creighton bench. And I think that they should be able to get the ball at half court, I think. And they're going to call a Another timeout or? Well, referee Tim Daly is saying you can't call another timeout. It's a confusing situation here for everybody. I'm not sure what's happening because Coach Adair's not even talking to her team's huddle. 
So they do call back-to-back -back timeouts. And this and now, one is a, the other official had indicated, Ryan Durham indicated a full timeout. Right, so that's the last we're, timeout for both sides. We're not sure, so we're just going to keep <laughs> it right here just to make sure that uh, but both teams uh, out of timeouts here. Tie ball game, 59. Both teams in the bonus. And just as we thought, it was not a full timeout, even though Ryan Durham had indicated it was a full timeout. So we're glad we didn't leave you here. So as Creighton will come back on, but they will trigger the ball out from in front of the bench. It will be Jalen Agnew guarding the inbounds pass of the Hoyas. And you know they're going to be getting the ball in the burden. and. She'll take it from there. I'm surprised Creighton tried, didn't try to prevent Dada from catching the ball there. There goes Burton trying to drive to the basket, taken away, and that's going to take us to overtime here. 59 59 off the three pointer by Lauren Wirtz. So we're going to get five extra minutes of action. With that, we're going to step aside for this timeout. You are watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Uh, three minutes. Well, we can probably look at that tying basket once again. I would think we want to kind of break down how that play developed out of the timeout. Show the last play. Show, and show then that show last the last play Dada's about turnover. them blocking that. So basically the last 16 seconds. The free throw shooting killed Georgetown, didn't it? We can talk about the the other thing we're probably going to talk about is the free throw shooting of Georgetown. It just killed them. They're five out of 16 from the free throw line. They got to wrap this one up. Okay. That was that one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Burwell, Rob Sims back at the DJ Sokol Arena. We are going to overtime. We mentioned it in the fourth quarter. We kept talking about regulation. Well, we're in overtime now, 59-59. We'll take a look at what the game time basket is right here. Sydney Lamberty drive to the basket, found Lauren Works in the corner. She was able to knock it down. Another look at that one. And then Dada Burton got the last opportunity. We'll take a look at that here in a second. We're about ready to start overtime here. We'll just take a look at maybe that one as Burton driving to the basket. And that one knocked away by Jalen Agnew and the time expired. But Rob, right now Georgetown five out of 16 from the free throw line. Yeah, and that's what, what did him in, unfortunately. They could have sealed this victory, a, a nice road victory. They could still get it, obviously. I'm gonna get the tip here. I think we're going to re-jump it. Yep, that's probably the best call. Tim Daly said he looked for help from his official. And they got it, and they are going to tip it again. And this time, Creighton comes away with the tip. But yeah, it's the free throws, Brad, that Georgetown just could not hit. Five of 16 in this game, four of 14. Just four of 12, excuse me, in the fourth quarter. Lamberty with the ball. They give it out to Agnew. Go to Rollerson down low, puts it up too hard off the glass, and we've got a. They say a kick, 
Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to be on Automako. I think that's on Automako is who they're going to charge well, let's it Let's take on. a look at the replay here. Great catch. Just couldn't finish by Rollerson. Agnew got taken out, and Automako, I believe, is, you're right, is whistled for the foul here. Yeah, Automako is going to get charged with them and her third foul. And the rules carry over. They're still in the bonus here in overtime. So the five fouls on both teams will put Jalen Agnew at the free throw line. She an 80% free throw shooter on the season. Hands the first. And that's, that's the story right now. If Creighton can come away with the win, it's going to be solely because of free throw shooting for both sides. Creighton now 10 of 12 with that make. And now. 11 out of 13 as they take a two-point lead, 435 left here in overtime. Creighton with one of their few leads of the ball game. Burton, who had that last opportunity knocked away. Burton trying to drive to the basket, tries to get it around Janning. Burton a three on the way, short on that one, and out of bounds off of Creighton, or off of Georgetown. Will be Creighton ball as Belt could not haul that one in. Burton with the ball in her hand for most of this second half. She decided to attempt that three-point shot. Comes up short, bounces off Belt, out of bounds. Back to the Blue Jays. Janning, again, still looking for some production from her. Agnew with the basketball on the outside. Lamberty back to Janning. Hit on the shot clock. Janning wide open. Jumper knocks it down. Well, you knew Janning couldn't stay cold all day. But it's, she could not have picked a better opportunity to knock down just her second field goal of the game. Now, she also has seven rebounds, a couple of assists. So it's not like she's been doing nothing out there. That one put up, no good. Rebounded, however, by Bell, because she was able to just reach over the smaller Lauren Works. Yeah, she's just got the size out there. You mentioned it, Brad. Not a, not a very tall lineup out there for the Blue Jays. Agnew puts it up, no good, but she is fouled by Jalen Agnew, and that will send Georgetown to the free throw line. Third foul on Agnew. Siadamako with the spin move there, creating the contact. Agnew tried to do her best. The, the red shirt freshman from the Wichita area tried to stay tall and not commit the foul, but it will get Adamako to the line. She's got 15 points today. That's about, that is her season average. One out of three from the free throw line. Now just one out of four. And uh, Georgetown's gonna be practicing free throws. Second free throw up. She does make this one, cuts the lead to three. 63 to 60. 3-10 left in this overtime. Lamberty gives the ball up to Agnew. Rollerson trying to set the screen. And we're going to get a reach-in foul, and that's going to go against Jones, and that will be her fifth. So she'll be out of the ball game. So the starter for White today. And Jones played some great minutes. She had some clutch baskets. Uh, they, they obviously have missed White in this ball game. There's no doubt about it, but they have played hard. Jones finishes 10 points, six rebounds, with those five fouls now, and she's going to have to take a seat, the transfer from Wake Forest. Tyshell King replaces her as Marissa Janning, her first free throws of the day, first one up and good. And Janning's a career 80% plus free throw shooter, only shooting 65% this year. Yeah, so maybe she, she's due to, to go on a, quite a run. Second one up, that one good too. Creighton has taken a five point lead. Their biggest lead of this game was six way back in the first quarter. And when it was 15 to nine, four and a half minutes into this game before Georgetown's defense really locked up the Blue Jays. Burton trying to look for some help, gives it up to King. Tyshell King just checking, having checked into the game for Jones. Burton, and now it's now it's Georgetown looking hesitant. And what a play by Burton. The up and under move with the left hand, able to put it in. And what can we say about Burton that we haven't already said? Her dribble penetration has just been so impressive today. Sydney Lambert, they go low post. Rollerson, the fake, puts it up, no good. Fight for the ball, Burton comes away with it. Rollerson's missed a couple down low like that. 
They try to weave the pass down low, and it'll be off of Creighton. Still be Georgetown ball at 158 left. Creighton with just a three-point lead, however. And it feels like that 158 is an eternity for both teams right now. They both just want to try to escape with the win, which will feel like for both sides. And we're going to get a foul. I don't know whether that was a three. That's on Rollerson. It was just a two-point shot. Just a, so just a we'll take a look there. at the play right here as Rollerson came out on her. And could have been actually on Lamberty, but they call it on Rollerson. Both players there got a piece of the elbow for Adamako, which is why it came up so short. And again, talking about the former Big East freshman of the year a couple of years ago, Adamako closing in on 1,000 career points this afternoon. Now she's up to 991 in her career. Now three out of six from the free throw line, second free throw up, and that one's good. So they've hit three in a row. And they've cut the Creighton lead back to one. So Janning will direct the action here. We'll mention again, Audrey Favor, the leading scorer for Creighton out of the game. She fouled out in that fourth quarter. Rollers and down low. Good entry pass. And she was able to seal off her defender. Good assist by Agnew. Rollerson, such soft hands, so calm under there. She never gets sped up. Turned around, easy finish with her offhand. Not an easy, makes it look easy. 17 points for Bree Rollerson. Pick and roll down low. Belt puts it up, gets it to go. So back to a one point game at the 114 mark. And that's a good offense there by two bigs to run that offense and as Dada Burton didn't have the ball in that possession. So Janning giving the signals again here. Lauren works out there who hit the game tire, always on the move, looking for to just work her way open. They go down low to Rollerson again. Lamberty a three. That one too hard off the iron. Rebounded by Georgetown. 45 seconds left. Adamako with the ball. Her team down by one. Burton now in control. And we're going to get a timeout called by Georgetown. And we're just going to keep it right here with 39.2 seconds to go. And Georgetown with an opportunity to take the lead in this one. And it's been a great ball game. It's been a, a great game for both sides, especially when you think about Georgetown playing without their leading scorer coming on the road to play at the Big East co preseason favorites, Great Blue Jays, undefeated at home this year, 6 0, oh, all time winning record here of 70. They win 77% of the games they've played at this building in its eight year history. And, and they have stayed in this game. They, oh, they, they had one down the stretch. They just couldn't convert on some free throws, but they still have a chance to come away with a victory with the ball and down one, 39.2 to go. So it will be Georgetown ball on the near side. Jim Flannery looking for a clarification on something. Yeah, I, I read official Tim Daly. I read his lips, and, and he called it right. The first timeout of the second half is a media timeout, and both teams were ready to play. Both teams were ready to go, but Tim Daly doing what he's supposed to do. This is should be an extended timeout. Uh, he told both teams to go back into their huddles and uh, wait for the rest of it. They're taking care. He's just taking care of uh, people that are broadcasting the game. If they needed to go to break there, then uh, they would have been happy. But uh, you stayed here with us, and we were able to talk about how this game ha has evolved to where it, where we are at right now with Creighton leading by one. And it it doesn't feel it felt it's felt like Georgetown has controlled this game throughout. Even when Creighton's had a five point lead in overtime. Uh, outside of that first four minute deluge in the first half, Georgetown has been the better team today. They've executed better and uh, outside of free throws, obviously, where they're shooting 40% at the line, but they're in a position now to come away with one because they made their last two free throw attempts by Dorothy Automaco. So it will be Georgetown ball. Look for either Burton or probably Automaco to take this shot. Right now for Creighton, Lauren Works has four fouls, so she's the only one in immediate foul danger right now. They do give it to Woodard. Woodard trying to work against Lamberty. They do find Adamaco, low post against Agnew, puts it up. That one blocked out of bounds. 
still stays with Georgetown, just nine seconds on the shot clock, 26 and a half on the game clock. It helped defense there by Brianna Rollerson as Adamako is matched up against freshman Jalen Agnew. That's a tough assignment for a freshman. King looking to trigger it in, does get it to Adamako. They'll bring it back out. Burton's going to start to drive to the basket, put up, and we're going to get a whistle and a foul. And that foul is going to go against Janning on Janning, just her second foul, but it'll send Burton to the free throw line for two. Well, this is kind of yeah, you saw, a microcosm of the game, free throw shooting for Georgetown. And you saw here's that replay once again. As Janning called for the foul, just had her right hand pinned against Burton's hip. I don't even know if she meant to have it there, but that's where it was, and Burton finally knocking down a clutch free throw. And ties the ball game at 20.9 seconds. Creighton does have a timeout left, and she knocks them both down. And that will get Jim Flannery to use his final timeout with 20.9. So what do you draw up here? They obviously don't need the three, but that's been where they've been most proficient. Uh, and Georgetown's been tough in the paint, and Creighton's had problems the entire game of penetrating and getting into the paint. So you see Coach Flannery drawing up his final play. We'll take a look at some of the highlights here from overtime. Janning, that's just the second field goal that she made in the entire game, and that up and under there by Burton. So impressive throughout this game. She has now tied her career high with 19 points with those two free throws made and have been clutch for the Hoyas throughout this ball game. So it's been the inside play, actually. So we'll see if Creighton decides to go down low to Bree Rollerson. Would not be surprised if you see an in and out game with Janning and Rollerson seeing what they can they can work out here. Janning will get the inbounds plenty of time so they don't need to rush. Lamberty. They go back. Lauren works a three. Yes, Lauren works again. No timeouts. Georgetown will have to run a play. They'll get this ball back to Tata. Woodard. They give it to Burton, a three on the way, no good. And that is your ball game. Works. And Creighton wins this one in overtime, 70 to 68, and a thrilling game here. Lauren Works came through not just once, but twice. She tied the game in regulation, and she won it in overtime for the seniors. So guess who our player of the game is going to be? Rob Sims is going to catch coach Jim Flannery here. As Creighton goes four and one in conference play and wins this one 70 to 68. Georgetown an outstanding game and they had led most of this day. We'll get uh, coach Flannery over as Rob's trying to Get him. Coach Flannery, we had mentioned earlier on, he was not feeling well, but Rob, we're going to throw it to you. All right, thanks, Brad. I'm here with head coach Jim Flannery. Flynn, just how you drew it up, right? Well, the last one was, you know, we, you know, thank God for Lauren making threes. I mean, she made the one that sent it to overtime, and then she made the game winner. She was terrific. Um, we, you know, we didn't play as well as we needed to play, but we battled, and, uh, you know, in, in our league, as good as everybody is, you're going to have to win games like today. And, and uh, you know, I don't think we were close to where we needed to be, probably, especially defensively. But uh, found a way to win. And, and uh, like I said, I thought Bree was Bree was big today, and the board was huge. And, and Audrey Faber had a, had a good game, too, before fouling out. Just had to grind that one out. Third home game in conference. Third time you've trailed at half. Are you running out of things to, to talk to your team about? Yeah, I told uh, I told the Chalk Talk group that I talked to before the game that if we got off to another slow start, I was going to have somebody else, somebody, uh, one of our season ticket holders or boosters, come give the free game talk because we haven't, we've obviously been been better late than, than early. Uh, you know, we got to find a way to, to figure that out a little bit because we're not going to keep being able to dig the holes that we're digging and, and find ways to win. But uh, this credit, Georgetown's a good team. I mean, there's their top 50 RPI team as of now, so um, we'll we'll take the win. But uh, you know, we are certainly very fortunate. I thought in a lot of ways they they played uh, more than well enough to win the game. 
Well, Coach, I know you're a little under the weather. Hopefully a win will, will make you feel better. Feels better. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. And we have Lauren Works step on in over here. We'll talk to her about a couple of clutch shots here. Lauren, let's talk about both those big shots you hit. That end of the game, talk about in the huddle, drawing that up. You know the ball's coming to you. What are you thinking And you know, as you catch that ball and release? I said a prayer before, honestly. <laughs> and Sid found me. It was a great pass. It was a great play by plan. Yeah, it was awesome. And then talk about overtime as well. You, you don't need a three. We're talking about it on the air. You didn't need a three, but it's an open look and, and a drawn up for you specifically and, and hitting that shot. Um, again, I was super nervous, but Sid had a great pass and it was a perfectly run play, honestly. Bree did a great job of rolling and Sid did a great job of passing me the ball. And your role has increased, obviously, in the, in the last few games with, with MC going down to injury. Do you feel, not that there's any more pressure on you, but, but talk about how your role has expanded and what you feel like you're going to need to do for, throughout the rest of the year to continue to win tough games like this in the Big East. Um, I don't feel like it's had a, more, a lot more pressure. Land does a great job of just telling me to play within my role. And when you're open, shoot the ball. But my teammates have done a great job of finding me when I can't shoot the ball. Um, but yeah. Lauren, great shots. Congratulations on the victory. Brad, back to you. Rob, thank you. Our player of the game, Lauren Works, she finishes the day with 16, none bigger than the last three. She was able to knock in with 10 seconds to go to move Creighton to four and one in conference play, 10 and five overall, Georgetown and tough luck falls to 0 and four in conference, eight and six overall. So for Rob Sims, this is Brad Burwell. Thanks for watching as Creighton wins this one 70 to 68 in overtime. You've been watching women's basketball on the Big East Digital Network.